Hi there, welcome or welcome back to Oops I Planted Again. My name is Courtney and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my all-time favorite, classic, common house plants. Now I'm gonna talk about plants that I either currently have in my collection or plants that I have had in the past. I'm not gonna talk about plants that I've never worked with because I don't think that would be a good <laughs> criteria or a good basis, like a good base model of plants that I've never had. Um, and then my criteria for this video are plants that I think are very accessible and plants that I think are pretty easy to take care of and that's kind of why they're my favorite and they're also really pretty. So let's dive into today's video. The first plant we have is the Philodendron Brazil. And I feel like if you've been watching my videos, I mention this plant a lot because it just fits so many categories of of like plant categories. It just fits so much. Um, I love the variegation if you're somebody who's looking for something that's a little less straight green. Like they just come in all different types. I have this one. I have two in my store. I have cuttings downstairs. I have a hanging basket um, right here. I just, I have philodendron Brazil everywhere. And the reason that I love this plant, one, I feel like it does grow um, quickly as one of the philodendrons that I have. I think it's really beautiful. I think it's really easy to care for. The one that I have in the hanging basket, I tend to shower that one. I actually don't think I've repotted it at all, like since I bought it. I don't think I've ever repotted it. It's only just now kind of giving me a little bit of trouble, so I'm going to refresh the soil. Um, but in general, the cuttings that I take from it have grown really well. I think they propagate really well. Um, I just think they look beautiful and literally any any way they just look beautiful um and i love the way that they grow not just the look but depending on the way you position these they can grow like in an insane like whatever this is whatever this look is like how it's going across this is two three i think this is three cuttings that are in this pot that have grown like this this is what it looks like from the back it looks kind of empty but from the front it's very very gorgeous and it just goes with everything. So I love this plant. My next plant is the Marble Queen Pothos. This is a big gorgeous one I got about a month or two ago. Um, and it does have some brown on the leaves, but that is due to me giving it like a preventative. I sprayed it down with Captain Jack's and I accidentally left it outside a lot longer than I meant to. Um, I kind of forgot about it, so it did get burned. Um, so that's really the only reason that there is <laughs> the brown marks on the leaves. I just need to simply cut those off. Um, but I have this, I have this huge Marble Queen. I tend to shower. I have Marble Queen cuttings. I have a smaller Marble Queen that I got like a year and a half ago. Um, I just, I love, I'm definitely a fan of not all green plants. What I love a lot about the Marble Queen is that the variegation on the leaves can look so different with any plant that you get. Like this one just has so, so much different variegation. And I'll actually go grab my other one that's really small, a small cutting that has this beautiful half moon variegation. Um, and I, I just love it. Any pothos really is always a classic to me in any plant collection. And there's just so many varieties. I think I have almost every kind. I don't have a glacier pothos. I think that's the only one that I don't have in my collection. I literally have almost every kind of pothos because I just think they're just, they're just a classic. They're easy to care for. They propagate really well. They look gorgeous, especially when they're so big and full. This one needs a watering because it's very light. Um, and I do tend to shower this one. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I do tend to shower pretty much anything that's in a hanging basket or really large, I tend to shower. I just think it makes it a lot easier. But I'm gonna go grab the other one and show you the variegation on that one. So I'm gonna get closer to the camera and hopefully you can see this like half moon variegation going on it actually is like oh i love the look of this but this was a cutting that i had for a while it did not grow it was probably about these leaves and one other one that died off um and it did not grow for a really 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 long time so i decided to repot it into a smaller pot to make sure that the plant could focus on giving new foliage instead of fruit growth and it sprouted pretty much everything from this point on and all of this is brand new, um, but I'm gonna repot it again and kind of 
lay it sideways because it seems like it kind of wants to do that or I actually could put it on a pole because I always have a ton of moss and a ton of poles so I actually may put this on a pole and see how it does and this one needs to be watered too. I have found that the last like couple of weeks my plants have been drying out rather quickly so I need to be more on top of watering just so that they get everything that they possibly could need. Next plant on my list is Monstera Adansoni. These are becoming way more available which I love. Um, I actually got my first one maybe last year and then I had so many cuttings. They grow super well in water. I have a long one and I will show you that that's in water. Um, and I just, I think they're really cool. I feel like they look very, um, I don't know, they fit a very aesthetic vibe for me. Um, and even though it's like an all green plant, I think the holes just, I think the holes look really cool on this plant. Um, and I have found that cuttings do really well. Um, most types of propagation do really well with this plant in my experience. Um, I think they're rather easy to care for. I did have one that did die. But I think it was because I was trying to force it onto a moss pole, but it was the moss poles that are from like Amazon. So I feel like those don't stay as hydrated at all in my experience. Um, so I feel like if I would have did maybe a piece of cedar wooden moss or an actual like handmade moss pole, it probably would have survived. Um, but I may do it again because I want to see one of these climb and I just think it's a really gorgeous plant. But I'm going to show you the one that I have in water. It's super long. So this one is really old um, and has a bit of damage, but I'll take care of it eventually. Don't be alarmed. This is a little bit of a jump scare, but there's a lot of missing pieces, um, a lot of damage, but it keeps growing. So I keep, uh, I just keep it in the jar. It's literally so long. I can't even show you the whole entire thing, but right here I can see that there's a lot of damage um, and it kind of had about a spat about a problem with spider mites and as I'm looking at it again even though I have sprayed it it looks like they're they're still kind of there so I will probably chop this off like I'll chop all of this this new growth I'll chop that off and put it back in water and watch it grow I mean I think it just grows really really well um, and I've actually had this for a really long time but I have found that it's been growing fast the next one we have is a fiddle leaf fig. Now don't laugh at what I'm about to show you, but this is the last remnants of the previous fiddle leaf, fiddle leaf fig that I actually have that is actually growing and I need to put into soil. So I have gone so, I have gone so back and forth with fiddle leaf figs. I have a love-hate relationship with them. I think they're gorgeous. I just think they look so good in a house, especially really big mature ones. And I have always gotten littler ones, smaller ones, um, and worked on growing them big. And, you know, sometimes it works out really well. Sometimes you end up with a cutting like this. Um, and yeah, I just think the next time I get one, I will probably buy a mature one that is actually huge because I feel like I have a good experience with taking care of them. They're just temperamental in my experience, um, but I still love them. And I just think they look really good. The next plant I'm gonna show you is right here on my shelf. I just don't feel like taking it down because it's kind of huge. But Monstera Deliciosa, I love this plant. I love how big and gorgeous the leaves are. If you can see how big this one is. So I think I have told this story before about what happened with this plant. I got it in February, February, February of this year. I got it from nursery. It was really, really huge. I repotted it into this nice pot. I had it upstairs in this plant room and then I was like, oh, I'm going to move it downstairs because I think it'll look more aesthetic and it hated it. It was dying off. It wasn't giving me any new growth. So I knew that something was wrong. I brought it back upstairs and it still was not happy. It still was not happy, which really upset me. So then I decided to break the plant apart and do split propagation, which I'll totally do a video on propagation methods that I think work well for certain types of plants. Um, but I did split propagation. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six Monsteras now. Um, but these, this one is the biggest one that I have. And then there's one over here that's rather large. And then I have a couple of other ones. There's another one right there. And then the rest are downstairs and just throughout the house. Um, I just think they look so good. And the big like dramatic ones are just so gorgeous. 
and I'm excited to see mine grow because they have been spitting out new growth ever since I split propagated them. So maybe it was just the soil, the pot, whatever the case may be. The plants are happy now, I am happy now, and I just am really excited to see them grow big and beautiful. And I also love drawing them. So I'm in art school, if you didn't know, I'm in studio art, a uh, studio art program, and I love drawing monstera leaves because I just think they're so gorgeous. And I'll actually insert a little video of this piece that I'm making in ceramics class that I'm gonna turn into a jewelry dish. Um, I just love drawing them. I think they're beautiful, gorgeous, and you can just do so much with them in art that I am excited to create. Now I wanna hear from you. What is your all time favorite common classic houseplant? Make sure you comment that below and I wanna thank you so much for watching today's video and I will see you in the next one.